So now that you know how to vote, hint hint, go watch my other videos, let's talk about how these votes are counted and the electoral system used for the Scottish Parliament elections. Warning, this video contains the use of basic arithmetic, please do not be alarmed when the formula appears on screen. The voting system used is called the Additional Members System, or AMS for short, and it's a hybrid system, meaning that it's made up of two other voting methods, first past the post and the party list. So we're actually going to learn about those two first, but don't worry as we do use them in Scotland too, but just for different elections. Let's start with first past the post, which we won't shorten to FPTP, because that just takes longer to say. This is the system used for the UK Parliament, where the country is divided up into constituencies and the people in that constituency each get one vote for who they would like to represent them. There is one candidate from each political party, plus some independents, and whoever gets the most votes is elected to represent the constituency in Parliament, and everyone else gets nothing. The big advantage of this system is that it produces a clear local representative. The big disadvantage is that it doesn't necessarily represent the views of the country proportionally. There are many examples of this, but most recently in 2015, the SNP won 94% of the seats in Scotland with only 50% of the vote, and in the UK as a whole, the Conservatives won 51% of the seats with only 37% of the vote. Next, the party list system. This is used for the European Parliament, where the UK is broken up into regions, with Scotland being one of these regions. Political parties drop lists of candidates and then the voters pick which party they would like to support rather than the candidates themselves. All the seats for that region are then distributed in line with the percentage of votes that each party got. More specifically, the don't method is used to distribute the seats. This involves creating a quotient, which is equal to the votes the party received divided by the seats they've already won plus one. Let's do a quick example of this. Let's take the European elections of 2014 use the Scotland region. Here are all the votes the party received. Nobody has any seats yet, so the quotient is just the number of votes received. In this case, that means that the SNP wins the first seat. We now work out a new quotient for them since they now have a seat. Labour's quotient is now the highest, so they get the second seat, and we calculate a new quotient for them. Next, the Conservatives are in the same boat. But next, it's the SNP that gets the second seat because their quotient is the highest, and we generate a third quotient for them. This then happens for Labour, and then UKIP get the final seat as their quotient is the highest left on the table. So now we can actually chat about the additional member system. As I said earlier, it's a hybrid system, and the 129 members of the Scottish Parliament are split between the constituencies and regions. There are 73 constituencies, which each elect a single MSP using the first past the post system. As mentioned before, this is the simple winner take all method. But what about the 56 additional members? The country is split up into eight regions Highlands and Islands, North East Scotland, Mid Scotland and Fife, South Scotland, Lothian, Central Scotland, Glasgow, and West Scotland. These regions are all made up of about eight to ten constituencies and each elect seven MSPs. These members are elected using the party list as mentioned before, however instead of just considering the seats won on the list vote, it also takes into account how many constituencies each party has already won in that region. Let's do a quick example. Here are the results for the Highlands and Islands region in 2011. The SNP won 6 of the 8 constituencies on offer, whilst the Liberal Democrats won the other 2. This means that before we begin distributing the list seats, the quotients for the SNP and Lib Dems are already based on them having 6 and 2 seats respectively. This means that the first list seat goes to Labour rather than the SNP, and second we have the Conservatives despite them coming 4th in the votes overall. Next another Labour seat, followed by 2 for the SNP, another Conservatives, and another final SNP seat. The SNP here win three of the last four seats to balance out Labour and Conservatives winning the early seats. The Liberal Democrats don't win any of the list seats due to already having two constituencies. Looking deeper into the results, we can see that if we were to distribute all 15 seats using only the regional votes, we would actually get the same result, resulting in nine SNP MSPs and two each for Labour, Lib Dems and Conservatives. So what's the theory behind using this voting system instead of either just first past the post or the party list on their own? Well the idea is to keep the local representative given by first past the post and use the regional list to make the parliament more representative of the overall vote. Looking at 2011, we can see the proportionality works to an extent when you consider the percentage of constituency seats to total seats won. The SNP get brought down from a massive majority to only a small one, whilst all other parties get closer to the vote share that they won. There is still a noticeable gap as the SNP still won a majority with distinctly less than half of the votes though. 
However, one downside is that AMS can create an issue with two tiers of MSPs. Constituency members who have to make sure they can get re-elected by their constituents and regional members who need to make sure they can still get re-selected by their party. So that's a little bit about the additional member system that is used in the Scottish Parliament elections. If you have any questions about this or anything about the election really, just pop it in the comments below and I'll try my best to come up with an answer.